We will begin this module by explaining the basic concept of the fly-by-wire system. In conventional aircraft, the movement of the control column is transferred along cables and pulleys until it reaches the control surface to be moved. In the A320 family, the cables and pulleys have been replaced by electrical wires. This has the advantage of saving weight on the aircraft. However, there are even greater advantages, as the video clip will demonstrate. In a conventional airplane, instead of this side stick, I'd have quite a big control column here. You need plenty of leverage to apply the mechanical forces you need to move the uh, control surfaces to control the airplane. In a conventional airplane, the pilot pulls mechanical levers to operate a hydraulic control system. But on the fly-by-wire, this heavyweight gear is replaced by an electronic system The pilot tells the flight computer what he wants to do, but it is the computer that translates this intention into action and executes the maneuver. The electrical signals created by side stick movement travel through flight control computers before being passed to the surface hydraulic actuators, also named servo controls. These computers analyze the signal to check that it is a safe command and ensure the optimum flight control surface deflection for the demand. This has advantages over conventional systems. It makes the aircraft extremely stable, enhances safety, reduces the workload of the pilot. Let's now look at the flight control surfaces themselves. The flight control system incorporates ailerons, elevators, a trimmable horizontal stabilizer, THS, for pitch trim, a rudder, ground spoilers, speed brakes. Now let's introduce the ECAM flight control page. You can see that all the flight control surfaces we have talked about are displayed. We will now see them in more detail. The movements of both ailerons and both elevators are symbolized by a green index moving in front of a white scale. The green rudder symbol is used as an index to display the movements of the rudder on a white scale. The rudder trim is indicated by a small blue line below the scale. Note that the rudder and the pedal deflections are limited as a function of speed via a rudder travel limiter. The rudder travel limit is indicated by small white ticks. It is presently in the high-speed position. The pitch trim position is indicated by trimmable horizontal stabilizer deflection in degrees up or down. Let's continue with the spoilers. The spoilers have several functions. Speed brakes use the three central surfaces Roll control uses the four outer surfaces. On the video, look at the left spoilers as they deploy, then at the right ones as the wings are leveled. Ground spoilers use all surfaces. On the video, watch as all the spoilers deploy at touchdown. On the ECAM flight control page, the spoiler extended position is indicated by small arrows. This is the case of the speed brakes. Now we will look at the flight control computers. The movements of the flight control surfaces are managed by seven computers. These are two elevator and aileron computers, ELAC, 
three spoiler and elevator computers, SEC, two flight augmentation computers, FAC. In addition, two flight control data concentrator computers, FCDC, are used to acquire data from the ELAC and SEC. Then they send it to the EIS. However, the data from both FACs is sent directly to the EIS. The status of ELAC and SEC is indicated on the ECAM flight control page. The other computers are not displayed. These indications will be seen in more detail in the abnormal operation module. Now we will see the hydraulic aspect. Three independent hydraulic systems are used to power all the flight control surfaces. The hydraulic systems which actuate each control surface are indicated on the ECAM flight control page by the use of G, B and Y. For example, the rudder is powered by the green, blue and yellow hydraulic systems. The ECAM flight control page is now complete. Pilots control pitch and roll through two side sticks. There are associated side stick priority lights. Side sticks and priority lights will be explained in a separate module. Pitch trim wheels are located on the center pedestal. There are two sets of conventional rudder pedals. A rudder trim panel is located on the pedestal. A speed brake lever is located on the left side of the pedestal. In addition, there are two panels located on the overhead panel to control the flight control computers. Now we will introduce the lift augmentation devices. There are five slats on each leading edge and two flaps on each trailing edge. The slats and flaps are hydraulically actuated like all the other surfaces. They are electrically controlled via two slat flap control computers, SFCC. Each SFCC has two channels, one for the flaps and one for the slats. Each channel can drive its associated surfaces. The flap lever located on the right side of the pedestal operates the slats and flaps. The flap lever has the following positions 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. The flaps and slats information is shown on the engine warning display. The flap and slat positions are indicated by white dots. Here the surfaces are extended to position 1 plus F. This is the flap 0 indication. Notice there is no labeling with this setting. The slats and flaps are fitted with protection functions. In particular, surface asymmetry between left and right wing, surface attachment failure, overspeed or uncommanded movement are detected.